Hi, I'm Marcus Cheatham. I'm the health officer of the Mid-Michigan District Health Department, serving Clinton and Gratiot and Montcalm counties in Central Michigan, and it's April 18th, and I am working from home, and that's why you get to see this cool mobile that I made, and you might hear some sounds of family life in the background. Uh, that's a good thing. What I want to talk about today is access to data about COVID-19 in Michigan and in mid-Michigan, and to do that, we're going to um, look at two sources of data. The first is the Michigan.gov website, and you may think you know all of the data that are on there, but recently the state has added a lot of important new stuff. And then we're also going to look at, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, mid-Michigan website where we have a lot of unique information to share with you there. <clears throat> this is the familiar landing page of the michigan.gov slash coronavirus webpage. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you get these totals, over 30,000 confirmed cases in Michigan, over 2,000 deaths as of April 18th. And here's the familiar map with the totals by county. Here's our three counties. Montcalm is at 24, Gratiot at seven, and Clinton at 103. Uh, what I, I want you to know is th all this information is cumulative. They keep adding cases and the numbers are only gonna get bigger over time. When people get well, they don't take them off these totals. Now, if you click this link here, cumulative data, you get to a web page that has a lot of sources of good news stuff. Uh, this table, of course, is just the cases by county, like we just saw on the map. These four links are really important. I'm going to show you what is behind them. Let's start with the daily counts. The information is broken out by emergency preparedness region, and we're just going to focus on region one, and that's uh, because Clinton and Gratiot County are in region one. Montcalm is in region six, but to keep this little talk simple. I'm just going to focus on region one. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you get to this nice chart of confirmed cases by date of onset. And this is just a really good picture of the outbreak in Michigan. Back here in March, uh, we were quarantining uh, travelers in Detroit. There wasn't a lot of uh, uh, cases yet. We, it was under control, but then creeped out into the community, started accelerating very rapidly. And uh, right now it looks like it's coming down. Boy, I hope that's true. We There have been cases in here that uh, we haven't found out about yet that we're going to find out about. They'll get recorded. So maybe the peak is more like here rather than here. Um, but we'll see. Some of these big spikes I'm suspicious of. Um, some of the hospital laboratory information systems have not been connected to the Michigan Laboratory Information System until recently. And sometimes when they connected a lab system, a bunch of cases that were sitting in that hospital that we didn't know about would dump all at once. So you'd see these, you'd see these spikes. Um, let's look at a similar graph um, based on symptoms rather than lab tests. So, um, uh, this is data from the Michigan Disease Surveillance System, and people who go into emergency rooms and some um, urgent cares, their symptoms are recorded. And if they have a fever, uh, a cough, and or shortness of breath, uh, the Michigan Disease Surveillance si symptom, uh, System flags them as a potential COVID case. And so here you can see the curve for Michigan, about 2% of the people being seen in emergency departments had symptoms similar to COVID back at the beginning of the year. But really, this is a lot of influenza and other stuff because COVID starts, as we know, at the beginning of March. And so then you can see this going up and then starting to creep back down. So we can only hope that this is uh, additional evidence that indeed we're past the peak of this outbreak. Another thing that we want to look at is data about places, and that is because there's a lot of important information that things that we care about here, including personal protective equipment, 
hospital beds and other things like that. So here's region one again, where Clinton and Gratiot are located. Here's the hospital inpatient beds, 1,361. <clears throat> Only 685 of them are occupied, so half the beds are empty. Boy, that's uh, really good news. Intensive care unit beds, 194 in the region, 133 of them are occupied. So that's a little tighter, but there's still uh, an ICU bed for somebody who needs it at this time. Something else that in, is important, as we know, is ventilators. A ventilator can save the lives of the sickest people. Uh, in Region 1, there are 246 mechanical ventilators. Only 63 of them are being used right now. So uh, this is really important. Um, and we, uh, we are glad about that. Now, if you scroll down a little farther, we get uh, reported counts of cases from congregate settings. That means like long-term care facilities, adult foster care. And as we know, a lot of the deaths uh, from COVID have occurred in these settings, uh, outbreaks in nursing homes. And so we're really concerned about that. And we can see that Clinton County has had two such outbreaks and uh, Gratiot none, it's not on the chart, but we can scroll down to Montcalm and it had one and this was uh, last I heard, uh, just uh, two people. So um, that's good if it's only two. Um, and then let's look at lab testing. We really care about lab testing. One of the things I want you to know about this chart is, like I said earlier, um, these are not all the lab tests, not all of the laboratory information systems are connected to the state system. So, uh, but it shows you the trend. Uh, so lab tests start up in earnest in the middle of March when the COVID cases are getting out of Detroit, spreading to the rest of the state. It trends up, matching the curves we've seen earlier from the confirmed cases and the symptoms trending down again. Uh, the orange part of the bar is the positive test. So about a third of the tests have been coming back positive uh, it looks like it's trending up again here. Boy, what's that? Are we starting to see more COVID? Well, I don't think so. Uh, more private labs are coming online. And as you know from the news, we do not have enough testing. And this is really, really important. Uh, so they're trying to push out more tests. Uh, so that's why you're seeing this increase. Some people say that this decrease here was due to inadequate testing. So we really need to get uh, more tests out there. So something else I want to share with you um, is uh, data from the MidMichigan uh, website. Um, so here's the splash page for us. And um, if you scroll down, you can see um, the cases by county again, 103 for Clinton, 7 for Gratiot, 24 for Montcalm by age, uh, by gender, some other things our first foray into mapping here. I'm going to show you a better map later on. But here's the trend for uh, mid-Michigan. These are cumulative cases, uh, so the line will only go up. Um, the gray bar is the total. So as of yesterday, we had 134 uh, cases all together in the three counties. As I said earlier, 103 from Clinton, Montcalm and Gratiot uh, with much fewer. So now I want to show you some more charts that are about to uh, pop on um, to our website. Um, here is the um, uh, new daily cases for mid-Michigan. These are the new daily cases from, from Michigan as a whole here. You can see them trending down a little bit. Um, for mid-Michigan, it's the same pattern. Starting back in the middle of March, we got our first case on the 16th. Um, they've been going up ever since. Our worst day was April 7th when we had 17 new cases in Clinton and one in Montcalm, and it's been going down um, ever since. So we can only hope that uh, this is the real deal. The work of local health departments is outbreak investigation. So this chart shows the total amount of work that we've been doing in mid-Michigan, Clinton, Gratiot, and Montcalm compared to the state. 893 total cases that we have worked in our three counties, uh, 488 in Clinton, 133 in Gratiot, 
272 uh, in Montcalm. Um, here are the actual cases. 102 for Clinton, 7 for Gratiot, 24 for Montcalm. Wait, you say, I thought there were 103 in Clinton. The data in this table were pulled a few hours before the uh, close of business uh, yesterday, so one of the cases hadn't popped in here um, yesterday. Um, one of the, the things that I want you to really look at is the cases that we're monitoring. These are people who are quarantined, plus the people who have been tested, but we don't have a result yet for them. So these people who are in, who are being monitored, who are quarantined by us, uh, they have not been tested yet because they have not developed symptoms. Uh, most of them will not develop symptoms, but uh, maybe 20% of them will, and then we'll be able to give them a test. You can't test until there's enough of a virus in somebody's body that the test can actually detect it. So that's why you wait until they're symptomatic. Otherwise, you're wasting the test. And then we've got, uh, to, looks like 24 uh, uh, people who have been tested and maybe 20, 30 percent of those are going to come back positive. So we're going to get new tests, but actually overall we are not monitoring uh, that many people. So uh, we don't expect an explosion of cases in the future. Here's a new map that's hot off the press for us. It is a map of the rate uh, per 10,000 people. Uh, this is a map of Clinton County showing the different townships and villages. Uh, here's St. John's, here's DeWitt, here's where Lansing pokes into Clinton County. Um, the, as you can see from the legend, red is hot. Red is where we have a high rate per capita and um, blue is cool. Blue is where it's low. And you can see DeWitt and DeWitt Township are, are really hot. Um, some people complain about this map. You know, understanding a rate is not intuitive and they want to see the case counts. The problem is in these townships that only have a few cases, uh, public health worries that we might inadvertently reveal the identity of uh, one of the people who we are monitoring, and that would be a violation of their right to privacy. And when I say that to people, it sounds crazy to them, but we actually have had cases of people um, who have put together information from maps, from press releases, uh, from announcements about uh, people who tested positive for COVID, and they put that information together and they actually go out and try to find people. And we had a single case that happened in our district, it happened in Montcalm, but uh, we do worry about privacy violations. The other thing about this map is it actually tells you something really important that the case counts don't tell you. So. There's a lot of people, not a lot of people, but uh, quite a few who live in DeWitt. And um, uh, so this is where you would expect to see a lot of cases in Clinton County. Um, so uh, just because you see some cases here doesn't mean that you really have a hot spot. You might actually have less COVID than you'd expect if it was just distributed randomly. So what we really want to know is where are the places where we see more COVID than we would expect if it was just distributed randomly? And indeed, you have a lot of cases in DeWitt and you have more than you would expect just owing to chance. So that really is a um, hot spot. And then here's the map of uh, Montcalm County. Blue is where we have none. Uh, so we do have two hot spots around Howard City in Reynolds and Winfield Township. And then in Greenville, um, Douglas Township uh, has more cases than you'd expect randomly, but um, there's not a lot of people in Douglas Township, so not a lot of cases actually here. The, the, the big number of cases is around Howard City and Greenville. And notice that the rate per capita is lower here um, in the um, Clinton County map. Red was 25. Uh, on the Montcalm County map, it's only 14. So um, red is not as hot on this map as it was in Clinton County. We have not mapped Rashid County uh, yet, and that is because there are so few cases, it just doesn't make sense um, to make uh, any maps. So uh, I want to wrap up by saying as of five o'clock today, April 18th, uh, we had not had a new case today. 
and I hope we close the day with no new cases. That would be the first day with no new cases since uh, March 22nd. That would be a great way to wrap things up. So stay home, stay safe. Uh, more videos will be coming as we have more to share.